Hey, what's up there, it's first. Today I'm going to be showing you how your car's AC system works and what are the different components that make up the system and which one does exactly. And at the same time, I'll take you over to my car over here and point out each different component so that way you get an idea what each one is supposed to look like as well. Alright, as some of you may know, your AC system is a closed system and by that I mean your uh, AC system is never supposed to be open to atmospheric pressure. The problem is, uh, a lot of times you develop small and large leaks which open it to atmospheric pressure, and when that happens, you usually end up losing refrigerant. And when you when, when you lose enough refrigerant, um, your AC pressure switch uh, disables your AC compressor, and when that happens, you won't get cold air coming out of your vents. All right, now if you're in that camp and you just want to top off the refrigerant in the system, I suggest you watch this video. I'll put a link to it right here on the side of the screen. Uh, in this video, I go over how you can safely add a refrigerant to your AC system and top off the refrigerant level. Now on the other hand, if you want to find out where your leak is within your AC system, I suggest you watch this video. In this video, I'll show you a quick and practical way for a duty sulfur to find out small and large AC leaks. I'll also be putting links for these videos in the description box for people that are watching this video on their cell phone. Alright, so your AC system works by basically manipulating the refrigerant that's within the system. It cycles the refrigerant between a liquid and a gas state and as the refrigerant goes from liquid to gas and vice versa, it uses a temperature difference of the refrigerant in those different states to uh, lower the temperature that's inside the passenger cabin. Alright, so when you turn on your AC inside your car, your AC compressor clutch, which is this guy right here, it engages your AC compressor shaft that runs through your AC compressor and then uh, you, you start turning the shaft inside the compressor and compressing the refrigerant that is coming into your AC compressor. And as you compress the refrigerant and you push it out of your compressor, the refrigerant is going to be in a gas state. Okay? So after your AC compressor, your refrigerant is in a gas state and then your uh, refrigerant goes to your AC condenser. The AC condenser is the radiator looking thing that's uh, in front of your car, usually in front of the radiator itself. And when the refrigerant reaches your AC condenser, your AC fan is already turned on and it blows uh, air over your AC condenser, uh, cooling down the refrigerant that's inside your AC condenser. And as you cool down a pressurized uh, refrigerant that's in a gas state, what you end up happening is uh, you turn that uh, refrigerant that's in a gas state into a liquid. And once refrigerant leaves your AC condenser, it's going to be in a liquid state. I should also mention that after your AC compressor, after the refrigerant leaves your AC compressor, uh, it's going to start being in the high pressure side, which I got in red. So everything you see in red is going to be your high pressure side, and everything you see in blue is going to be your low pressure side. Alright, so here's a look at our AC compressor on this car, which is a 1995 Toyota Camry. There's our AC compressor pulley, our AC compressor, and our output and input AC lines. And to find out which one of these lines is uh, your output and which one is your input, well, you just have to follow these lines and the one that goes to your uh, AC condenser, which in our case is going to be this line right here, and we're going to follow it and it kind of wraps underneath, then comes back up, then goes in here, which then goes through here to our AC condenser, which is this guy right here. And also here's a look at our radiator slash AC fans, which are these two guys right here. Alright, so as the refrigerant leaves our AC condenser in a liquid state, it travels to a receiver dryer. And the job of our receiver dryer is to remove contaminants and moisture from our AC system. Because both of those things can damage different components within the system or uh, make our system not work properly. And also I should mention that if you ever do any kind of repair on your uh, AC system, you definitely need to replace your receiver dryer. because. If uh, this becomes uh, exposed to atmospheric pressure over a long period of time, it just loses the efficiency and it's not something you can reuse. So this is something that has to be replaced every time you open up the system. Alright, so as the refrigerant leaves your receiver dryer, it's going to travel to either your expansion valve or orifice tube. Now this is going to be depending on what kind of car, what your make and model you have. Uh, I know on the board I got to look like it's going through both, but it's going to go either through an expansion valve or an orifice tube. Now both these guys basically do the same thing which is to uh, allow the high pressure refrigerant in a liquid state to pass through a very tiny opening and onto the low pressure side. And they work a little bit different in the way they achieve that and which is that your expansion valve is basically adjustable. 
it's got a, it's attached to your evaporator and it senses the temperature of your evaporator and then it adjusts the diaphragm that's inside the valve and it's just the size of that opening that allows the refrigerant to pass through. Uh, but on the other hand, your, or if you have an, your car has an orifice tube, uh, your orifice tube is just that, it's a tube, it's a, usually a longer tube with a tiny opening at the end. And adjustments uh, in those systems are made by your AC pressure switch, uh, which uh, cycles your AC compressor on and off, and that's how uh, adjustments are made with a system with, uh, with an orifice tube. So as a refrigerant passes through these guys, passes through that tiny opening, onto the low pressure side, it expands quickly because it's in a high pressure liquid state and as it goes to low pressure, you know, it's going to expand and as it expands, it's going to turn into gas. And as it turns into gas, it's going to use up a lot of its heat that it had before it reaches the low pressure side and it's going to cool down, the refrigerant is going to cool down uh, quite rapidly. And when that happens, the refrigerant then gets to your evaporator. Uh, this, uh, your refrigerant at this point, it's at its coolest state it's going to be and then your AC blower fan is going to blow air over your evaporator which by the way your evaporator is usually underneath uh, in, in the, in your, inside your car underneath your dash and your AC blower fan is uh, usually underneath your glove box for a lot of cars and uh, your AC blower basically is going to blow uh, air over your evaporator and your evaporator is going to then absorb uh, some of the heat of the air that's blowing over it and then it's going to cool down that air and then that air is going to travel through your dash and come outside your vents as a form of very nice uh, chilly cool air. And after your refrigerant leaves your evaporator is uh, going to travel through your return AC uh, return line back to your AC compressor and the whole thing is going to just uh, keep on repeating as long as you have your AC turned on. Alright now let me show you these uh, components on the car as well. All right, so as we talked about, when the refrigerant leaves our AC condenser, it comes out to our uh, receiver dryer, which is this guy right here. And then after it leaves our uh, receiver dryer, after getting uh, cleaned up, our refrigerant travels through this line, which is gonna wrap around, it's gonna go underneath our radiator, and then come back out the other side. But uh, also here's a look at our uh, high pressure port that uh, you'll need to locate when you go to uh, hook up a uh, AC gauge to try to diagnose problems with your AC system. All right, so after our refrigerant leaves our receiver dryer, on this application, the AC line is gonna travel underneath the radiator housing, and it's gonna come back out right here. All right, and here's a look at our high pressure line. It's gonna be the smaller one, and it's smaller than our low pressure line, because this way it's uh, easier to pressurize the, the high pressure side of the AC system. And if we follow our uh, high pressure line, it's gonna go towards the back of the engine bay, and into right there. It's gonna be this, this upper line, it goes to our expansion valve, which is that guy right there. Now it's going to be very hard to show you the expansion valve and our evaporator, but the evaporator is going to sit inside your dash, pretty much on the opposite side of uh, where this expansion valve or where our AC lines are going through. And once the refrigerant goes and tra travels through the evaporator, it's going to come out through this uh, lower hose, which is just underneath our uh, high pressure hose. And that's going to be our uh, low pressure side or our uh, AC return line. And if you follow our low pressure line, it's just going to wrap around back towards the front of the engine, in our case. And again, it's going to be this uh, larger line, which is going to go around, loop around, back to our AC compressor, and the whole process is just going to repeat itself. Alright, here's something I forgot, and that is if uh, your car does have an orifice tube, you're going to have an AC accumulator instead of a receiver dryer. And uh, they both do pretty much the same thing, but uh, your AC accumulator is going to be on your uh, low pressure side. Alright, so that's all there is to how your car's AC system works, but if you're interested in knowing how you can diagnose problems with your AC system as well, then I suggest you watch the next video. I'll put it up on the screen along with some other AC related videos that I've made, uh, so you can just click on it. But uh, before you do that though, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.